Hey, so I'm James Lowry. I live in Birmingham, Alabama. So this is coming to you remotely from Birmingham, Alabama. I've been to Antarctica six times. And what you're gonna see is a video of my last trip, my sixth trip. And I'm gonna run the video and narrate it as we go. Uh, so it'll show you a good introduction to Antarctica and what it's like. It'll feature a lot of whales because we had a whale researcher on board the ship who uh, did a lot of uh, tagging of whales and taking biopsies. So uh, we co we're concentrating on this trip on whales. We saw over 500 whales of various different species on this uh, trip back in February of this year. So I'll go ahead and start the video and we'll just uh, take a look at what Antarctica is all about. Right here on the first scene, you see an iceberg and in the middle of you see some of the meltwater. So uh, tourists are in Antarctica during, the, uh, during their summertime, which is our winter time. And so it's their summertime. So uh, a lot of the ice melts and in an iceberg like this, it may start collecting in the middle or in a hole of indentation. So this is fresh water that's melting off of the iceberg itself and forming a little pool. And a lot of times when uh, the scientists or whoever's in Antarctica sees one of these, they call it a penguin swimming pool. So uh, it creates uh, in the midst of, of an iceberg. This is a very typical sort of iceberg size wise. A smaller piece, like over here on the left, would be called a big a bergy bit. And then you see our little ship here, 12 passenger ship, uh, the smallest ship I've been on in Antarctica. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start the video and just take a look at Antarctica. So you'll notice as we go through, the water is very clear and clean wonderful reflections. You can see through the water quite a bit, very be beautiful blue colors. So there's our ship, the two zodiacs, the smaller little uh, boats that we went to land on or in uh, are on the back of the back of the boat. So you're gonna see a lot of drone footage. This is very rare. You're, you have a rare opportunity here to see drone footage in Antarctica because most tourists go, they don't have the uh, luxury of seeing the drone footage, but there were two drones that the crew had and were running on the ship and would send out. And so you're going to see a lot of that. This is a skua, which is a penguin's biggest enemy on land. Uh, skuas try to get the baby penguins and the eggs to eat. So these are chin strap penguins. They're hot, uh, waddling along chin strap because as you can see they have a dark line underneath their chin so it reminded the early explorers of helmets with chin straps. This is a Waddell seal, lays on the beach, likes to lay on the beach and sun in the rocks. This is a kelp gull. It's a raptor but it's, it's a gull that acts like a raptor. This is a typical penguin colony. You can see the pink color of their guano, of their excrement means that they're eating krill, which is a tiny shrimp-like creature. These are whale bones that have washed up and were left over from the whaling days in Antarctica. And you'll see this is a, a water boat that was used in the whaling days. So this water boat is about, probably about a hundred years old. And you notice that things did not deteriorate in Antarctica because it's a desert. Uh, so a lot of the bones have washed up here as well as people have brought them there uh, to the Bunyan graveyard. Penguins spend all of their time, except for mating and raising a chick on land, they spend it in the water. So they try to find places they can climb up onto a piece of ice, onto an iceberg and rest. Here are some more of the water boats. During the whaling days, the whaling uh, operations had to have fresh water and they would send the boats out to cut off pieces of icebergs and bring it back and melt the ice to make the water. This is very rare footage that you're seeing here of the top of a, a glacier looking down into the crevasses. So these blue streaks here are crevasses, some of them very deep. 
And those are dangerous um, because if they're covered over by snow and explorers or researchers are on top of the glacier, they can fall through and down into the crevasse. The blue color is the same blue as the sky for about the same reason. Uh, the ice is refracting the sunlight and breaking it down into its, into its shorter wavelengths of blue. This is a little bit speeded up of a zodiac when we were going along. Zodiacs can go about 35 miles an hour, and we were just going fast to get to a spot to find whales and see whales. So there's a humpback whale coming up and breathing, taking a breath of air, and then we'll go back down and feed and eat, and then come up and have to take another breath of, of air. They're mammals, and so they have to uh, breathe the air. Uh, they cannot breathe underwater. So once you see his tail flip up like that, it, the fluke it's called, that means that he's now going down, he's breathed enough, taking his air, and he's gonna go down and feed some more. So we were going pretty fast in the Zodiac this time and the wind was blowing. So I just laid down in the Zodiac to, to get out of the wind a little bit. And then the, <clears throat> the driver said, whale, and we looked out and there was another whale. So we saw lots of them. Uh, here's a leopard seal laying on a piece of ice, a floating piece of ice, just like the penguins. They like to get out and rest and uh, take, a, take a little break. Here I am on the left over here, and a lot of uh, icebergs here floating around, all sorts of shapes, and they melt. You can see they're the part underwater is, is melting, and then they will roll. They will just roll over because they got top heavy. Beautiful clear water. These are typical of the mountains in Antarctica. All of the mountains are covered in ice and snow, except for where it's too steep. You'll see the brown areas of rock is where it's too steep, but every valley is a glacier, has a glacier in it. This beautiful stark colors, it's uh, white and blacks and browns with blue water and then the animals, none of the creatures, none of the animals in our Arctica are afraid of humans. They have no reason to be afraid of humans. And so uh, you can walk right up to them. You're not supposed to go within 15 feet, but sometimes they'll come closer than that. So these are ones that are sleeping and then they're breathing while they're sleeping and then they will go down and eat some and come back up. So they're just laying along the top of the water asleep. Uh, the whales sleep uh, like birds that are migrating do. They sleep with half of their brain active and the other half not active. So here's some that are just floating along, that are sleeping, and then they'll take a breath of air and then stay close to the, to the top of the water. Notice the glaciers in the valleys. And here I, here I am again in the Zodiac. You can see how close we get. So there's the blue. Uh, this is a glacier that, that lost its footing because it got to the water and it lost its uh, support underneath. And I've seen this glacier on every one of my trips. And the first time, all these chunks of ice and snow were very jagged. But now the wind has, has taken those jagged edges off and snow has fallen on them. And so it's very interesting to see this same glacier uh, ice fall change through the, the different trips. Here's some more of the crevasses, that beautiful blue. And this is a scene with a drone that people that go to Antarctica do not see. You're very fortunate in being able to see this uh, from a drone because the people are down at the water's edge and they don't get to be up here on top and looking down. Uh, the blue is because the wavelengths of the sun are broken up and the blue short wavelengths are scattered by the ice in the glacier, just like the sun or just like the upper atmosphere scatters the sunlight and causes the blue short wavelengths uh, to scatter. And that's why we have blue skies. Here's the humpback whales. You'll notice how clear the water is. You can see these, these white, big, huge white pectoral fins. The humpback whales are the only ones with, that, with those big, huge, white 
uh, pectoral fins. You'll notice that the, the whale blew some air bubbles down here at the bottom on its way to the surface, got rid of some of its air, it's, uh, and then it blew the rest of it once it got to the surface. And so we saw a lot of um, parents and babies. So that was a baby with a parent. You'll see more of that in the, that's called a fluke on the end of the tail as it goes down to feed. So here are some uh, icebergs, bergy bits. So this would be a little growler, bergy bit, a piece of a berg. And the, the blow of the, of the whale is a mixture. It's really just blowing air out. But there's a pocket on top around the hole that water ga gathers in. So when it blows that air, it mixes with the water and makes a mist. Each species of what here's a baby with the adult here. So the adults bring their babies to feed in Antarctica. 80% of the Earth's whales come to Antarctica part of the season to feed. The, the, the blow of each species of whale is different. So they have part two of the babies over here. The babies are learning to do this bubble netting. So what happens is one of the whales goes around and blows bubbles. And as, they do, as it does that, it captures the krill or the fish in the bubble. It's like a net because they get confused. And then the other whales are waiting underneath the water. And then when the bubble net is created, they come lunging up through that bubble net with their mouths open to grab the food that one of the whales has captured by making a bubble net. And they part the two babies off to the side because the babies are learning how to do that. These, we saw three different groups of orcas. So this also is rare footage, it's drone footage of orcas in Antarctica. You'll see them uh, swimming along and how you can see how clear the water is in Antarctica. You can see them. There's a baby with the adult. There's another baby with the adult and the babies stay very close sometimes because there's another baby with the adult because they're learning things and they're, they're, they may still be nursing. And here's another little baby scooting along. So here's our ship again. There's the Zodiacs mounted on the back. A whale makes a whale print, makes a disturbance on the surface. You can see over on the bottom right when they go down, when they go below the water. Here's another group of the orcas that we saw. Two, like I said, we saw three different groups of orcas and they were able to send the drone over above them to film them. Uh, in the third group, you'll see we they filmed from the ship itself. So whales, uh, the larger whale of the two adults is a female. The male is a smaller whale. So here, this looks like a baby that's staying just really close, probably to the mother. I think I mentioned that each species of whale has a different shaped blow. When, the, uh, when they're blowing the air out at the surface, it's a different shape uh, for each different species. So in the distance, experts can see a blow in the distance and know what, what type of whale it is. This is on, on land. These are fur seals. You can see how close we can get to them. And this is one of the crew who's pulling over the two Zodiacs to tie them up. Each Zodiac will hold about 10 people. 
we didn't have that many. We only had uh, eight on the trip. So these are snow petrels on the nest. Didn't care that we were just right there taking pictures. Uh, these are Gen 2 penguins that live on the research station. They're not afraid of humans. This is another uh, skeleton of a whale. This is the head, the skull of the whale. And these are, are the vertebra coming back to, and the rib bones. They brought these over to sort of make a model of the full size whale bones. Uh, Anita is a professional photographer and she liked to get right down at the level of the penguins. And so she was oftentimes sitting in their, in their guano. So this is brash ice. It's pieces of ice because of the melting of the sea ice. And so the ship is coming through and you can see the drone footage here. The ship is plowing through the brash ice. When we put the zodiacs out there, the two zodiacs mounted on the back of the ship, then we would go through this kind of brash ice. Just regular outboard motors, Evan Rude outboard motors running the zodiacs. They handle the ice. It wears the propeller down after a while, uh, but just regular, regular outboard motors. Here he is. Uh, here we are coming out of that brash ice area. They even had some uh, folding chairs on the deck here, so we had some deck chairs. Those are reflections in the water. Sometimes the water is very still, sometimes it's very choppy. But just reflections are beautiful. This is the Lemire Channel. We're going through the Lemire Channel. It has uh, mountains on either side of the channel, makes it very beautiful. Uh, the mountains are several thousand feet high. Uh, when we went through on this trip, it was very cloudy, as you can see. Uh, so I'd like to have it clear, but I had a lot of clouds. Uh, moss and uh, scum here, algae on the rocks and you can see the penguins coming in and out. There'll be some over here on the back side uh, that just pop out of the water, coming out of the water. Up there. So they waddle because they're, uh, that's the easiest, safest way to walk on ice and snow because you just shift your body weight to one foot then shift it to the other foot. Uh, penguins porpoise when they swim. Whale, you can see how close we are. It's between us and the ship. Like I say, we saw 500 whales, about 500 whales on this, this one trip. There he is right under us, right alongside the Zodiac. And then uh, some of the research stations that were used in the past are still preserved and nothing deteriorates. So um, this is just how it looked when there was a research station. These are a couple of the crew looking through the guest book. comes an orca. This is the third group of orcas that we saw and they filmed it from the ship. We got close enough. You can see the snow coming down. The weather can change immediately in Antarctica. It can be beautiful clear skies and then suddenly have a snowstorm or beautiful blue skies and then have wind pick up that's hurricane force winds. It can just change immediately. So again the penguins are resting on the rocks here uh, because they spend their uh, their lives in the water.